dear friends, I welcome you to our Bible study online. Discipleship is a very important thing our churches need to begin to look at again. It was an important thing among the early Christians. And I think since it was the strategy of the master himself, we cannot look away from it in our own time. If you go back to the mandate of Christ himself in Matthew chapter 28, 19 to 20, you will see that a very important command he gave to his disciples is to make disciples among other things. And talking about discipleship, we'll be looking at a passage from scripture. We'll be reading from Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. So I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. I read, As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. And as he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and they called them. Immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. Even then, the very verse I'll be looking at is verse 19. So we are talking about Matthew 4 verse 19 and it says, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And that translation we say, Follow me and I will make you fish for men. But for our purpose here, I will prefer to render it this way. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. This will be a biblical definition of discipleship. But before I go on to explain that passage, I want us to realize that discipleship is extremely important in Christianity and in the church. If you look at the Old Testament, books, you'll find the word Christian mentioned about three times, but the word discipleship is mentioned at least 269 times, depending on the translation you're using. In some translations, it is even more than 269 times. If you look at the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 18 verses 19 to 20, Jesus told his disciples to go out and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe everything he taught them. If you look at this great commission, it has four components. Go, that is go and proclaim the gospel. The second one is make disciples. The third one is baptize them. And the fourth one is teach them to observe everything I have taught you. Of these four components, the most important one is the command to make disciples. In fact, the other three in the original language are the service of this particular command. In a way, you can say the other three, that is go and proclaim the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe everything, are practically explaining what is entailed in discipleship. That is to disciple a person, 
You need to proclaim the good news to the person, that is evangelize the person. You need to bring the person into the corporate body of Christ through baptism and the other sacraments. And you need to teach the person to observe the commands of Jesus. Not in the sense of knowing them, but also in the sense of doing them. So a disciple is one who knows and at the same time does what the master has taught us. When you look at the priestly prayer of our Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 17, if you look at verse 4 in particular, Jesus made a very important statement. He said to the Father, glorify me because I have given you glory. I have finished the work you gave me to do. What is quite instructive here is that he had not yet gone to the cross. He came to save us, to die for us on the cross and to be raised again. But at this point, he had not gone to the cross and he still claimed he had finished the work. What work was he talking about then? Could it be his healing miracles? Could he be casting out demons? Could he be just proclaiming the good news? No. If you read from verse 5 through 18, you will understand what he actually meant. He went on to focus on the disciples he had made, saying that he had prepared them and they were ready to go out and carry out their world mission. The mission was going to entrust to them. Jesus placed huge emphasis on discipleship. During his ministry on earth, three and a half years of his ministry on earth, Jesus went from place to place proclaiming the good news of salvation to people. He ministered to large crowds. He tried to form a larger group of people as disciples. But then he gave his life uniquely at least about 70% of his time to 12 men, the 12 apostles, his 12 disciples that he named apostles. That is to tell you how important discipleship is. And he knew that after his physical withdrawal from the earth, everything was going to depend on these disciples. Actually, after his departure, physical departure from the earth, on the day of Pentecost, there are about 120 disciples of his and his mother in the upper room when he poured out his spirit upon them. These were the ones that left Palestine and went from place to place and reached the heart of the world of that time, Rome, to propagate the kingdom, to spread the good news to all. So discipleship, is very, very important. People who merely go to church but have not become disciples indeed cannot transform the world. Only those who have become disciples in every sense of the world can transform the world for our Lord Jesus Christ. Having said that, what or who is a disciple? Dear friends, thank you for following today's discipleship series. It continues. Make sure you come back for more.